Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline Michelle from Interior Creature. Welcome back to AMA Fridays. So today's question is actually multiple questions kind of rolled into one. I had several folks over the past few weeks just write in and ask me to clarify what exactly is an incarnation cross? Like how is it determined? We had questions about how it works, how it functions, how it influences our chart. So we're gonna dive deep into that right now. So what is our incarnation cross? Think of our incarnation cross as the big like major key or major theme that's just going to be recurring in your life over and over and over again. It's your karmic slash dharmic purpose for being here on the planet during this life cycle. So it's going to eventually be this big gift you've been given that you're here to share with other people. You're going to grow through it. You're going to help other people grow through this thing. But typically it starts off as some sort of overarching lesson that we're here to learn. And it's supposed to be, it's purpose of our incarnation cross is both instructive and constructive. So it's something that's gonna grow us, teach us a lot through these experiences, through these interactions with other people, through these situations that help us step into our highest self. So if the incarnation cross is the what, the profile is the how. So the incarnation cross, remember, it's what we're here to do, when we look at our profile, our profile shows us how we're here to do that because the two numbers of our profile represent how we learn and how we behave. So it's really the intersection of these two things working together in tandem that helps us live out our karma and our dharma here on the planet. One of the things you're going to notice as you're unpacking all those core foundational elements of your chart, like your type, your centers, your authority, eventually your gates and your channels, you're going to notice that they all thematically kind of connect and, and basically form the foundation for how you live out your incarnation cross as your profile. So one of the things I always encourage people to do, even sometimes before they dig into their gates and their channels, is to understand the destination, understand the incarnation cross, the what of what you're here to do, the profile, the how of how you're here to do it. And then it makes sense why you're that type, why your authority is what it is, and why the specific centers are open and closed, and why you have specific gates activated in specific channels. It's all forming that support structure to uphold and empower you toward living out your incarnation cross as your profile. So where does our incarnation cross come from? Well, it's whatever gate our conscious sun activates in our chart. So my charts on the screen, you see there's a big red arrow pointing to the specific box you're going to look for. So it's the conscious sun activation. Uh, my conscious sun activated gate 36. You see there's the sun right there and it's on my first line. So that gate, it just gets a special name in human design called our incarnation cross. And when we dive deep into that gate, that's that big theme that's going to show you the what of what you're here to do. And that basically comes from our astrological natal chart. So the gate itself and the line come from the corresponding degree band in which that astrological placement appears. So for example, like I've always known because I'm a big astro nerd that my sun is in Pisces. Well, because it's at a specific degree band, like for example, it's between 20 22 degrees and 23 degrees and those specific minutes and seconds, that's that correlates if we translate that to human design language to gate 36 on line one. Um, Robert Allen Krakauer, when he channeled human design, one of the big kind of um, innovations of the system was it mapped those 64 stories of the I Ching, of the hexa, uh, those 64 hexagrams to both our centers and to the 12 zodiac signs. So Pisces governs a set of gates, Libra governs a set of gates, et cetera. And so we're just basically taking that set of gates and lines and connecting them to a specific degree band. When you run your chart on mybodygraph.com and you look under the chart properties section, see where the bright green arrow is on the screen? It's gonna list out for you right at the bottom of that first section, the name of your incarnation cross. So it's always either a right angle cross, a left angle cross, or a juxtaposition cross. And you're gonna notice a set of four numbers after it. The first number is always gonna be the same number as the gate that your conscious sun opens. So it's basically listing your big four, your conscious sun placement, your conscious earth placement, your unconscious sun placement and your unconscious earth placement in that order because thematically those four gates work together to really like shore up and support your incarnation cross. So like I mentioned, there are three different types of incarnation crosses someone can have. A right angle cross, a left angle cross, or something called a juxtaposition cross. Now, the word cross a lot of times it's likened to this idea of the cross you're here to bear, quote unquote. Now that sounds really negative, right? Like, oh God, there's this like thing that's going to be this burden on my shoulders my entire incarnation. Well, it's not quite that at all. It typically starts off as something that's a lesson, but we quickly through, you know, personal reflection, through self-awareness, through contemplation, 
are able to turn it into something that's more of a gift, right? So one of the um, authors who writes a lot about human design, Chayton Parkhan, actually refers to these as life themes, which I kind of like a little bit better because it doesn't have to be a negative. It could definitely be a positive. So think of writing across this as personal life themes, left angle crosses as interpersonal life themes, and juxtaposition crosses as something called a fixed destiny. So if you have a right angle cross, you have something called a personal life theme. And what that basically means is that you're here to wrestle with something very personally, very privately first. And once you have your quote unquote, like dark night of the soul, and you figure that thing out for yourself, then you're able to help other people with it, right? And the dark night of the soul doesn't necessarily have to mean like rock bottom, but it is something typically that we have to struggle with to really understand the depths of it. So then we can actually be of assistance to other people who are struggling with the thing. Now, left angle crosses are a little bit different, whereas right angle crosses have to do for themselves before they can do for others. It's the opposite for left angle crosses. They have an interpersonal life theme, or sometimes it's even referred to as a transpersonal life theme. And what that basically means is they have to be able to do for others, and through doing for others in community, in collaboration, they start to realize, oh my goodness, this is something I should kind of bring home to my own life. I need to turn this magnifying glass on myself. There's adjustments I can make as well. So the, typically the big lesson, the aha, the eureka moment, if you will, comes through work with others. It's like I learn how to do for others and then I'm able to do for myself. Now, juxtaposition crosses we're going to see in a moment are the most rare type of incarnation cross to have. Again, they're also referred to as a fixed destiny cross. Um, I got to go back and forth as to which terminology I like better. Juxtaposition crosses are only um, going to be present for people who have a 4-1 profile, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, they are really a deep dive into one gate. So instead of having those big four cl very clearly thematically linked gates from your conscious sun, your unconscious sun, your conscious earth, and your unconscious earth kind of working in tandem, typically the conscious sun's gate is the big theme that all of the other uh, kind of placements in your chart support. So think of it as like a very kind of like narrow focus deep dive into one thing and then everything else in the chart supports that as opposed to having kind of four different you know themes and variations of the same kind of bigger lesson or learning if you will so we'll dig into that further in a moment the kind of incarnation cross you have is determined by your profile so if you're a one three a one four a two four a two five a three five a three six or a four six you're going to have that right angle cross that that personal karma now, if you're a 5-1, a 5-2, a 6-2, or a 6-3, you're going to have a left angle cross. You're going to have that interpersonal or transpersonal karma. And then if you're a 4-1 profile, which is the most rare profile in human design, these are the folks that have that juxtaposition cross or that fixed destiny cross, where it's a deep dive into just one gate um, that frames the theme for the entire chart. So as I mentioned earlier, our incarnation cross is determined by the gate that our conscious sun opens. So all of the rules of gates apply. So for every gate that we have in our chart, there's a low frequency vibrational expression, a higher frequency vibrational expression, and kind of a pure miraculous love expression. And that definitely applies to our incarnation cross as well. So in the Gene Keys, Richard Rudd looks at this as like a progression that we kind of work through, right? We typically start off in the shadow of a gate. And shadow doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that we're evil or negative. It's not a judgment at all on who we are as a person. It's typically when the choices that we're making or the behaviors that we're choosing with regard to the energy of that gate, they're typically harmful to ourselves or harmful to others because they're rooted in fear. So Rudd actually further breaks down the energy of the gate into something called the repressive and the reactive. So the repressive typically is when you're valuing others, but to the detriment or abandonment of yourself. And the reactive is when you're valuing yourself, but to the detriment or abandonment of other people. And obviously neither one of those is a great way to walk through the world because you're either a giant wrecking ball that's harming other people, or you're never really standing in a place of love and integrity with yourself, right? So when we start being able to balance those two things, considering self, considering other, and picking that kind of middle path, we step into the gift. The gift is when self and other are in balance and choices are made that are trying to serve our highest good and the greater good. At least that's the aim. That might not always be the way that they net out, but the goal is to walk through the world with love. And once that kind of switches for, to be our default setting, where we step out of the shadow, the shadow is no longer the way that we automatically react to things. We're in the gift firmly. 
then we can step into the city of that gate. And the city is this enlightened, pure love, miraculous expression. Now think of it as almost like, I don't know, like how in Buddhism, a city, for example, is like a monk who's so enlightened in their practice that they're able to like regulate their body temperature or, you know, levitate in some, in some traditions, right? So this city isn't necessarily going to be our default setting. Um, unless we do a lot of spiritual work. But typically the goal is to get the gift to be our new default. And then we see more and more frequent glimpses of this city, of this really highest vibration of the energy. So to figure out how your incarnation cross is working for you, again, we're going to do the same alchemy we do than when we're looking at any one of our gates. So you want to really understand and contemplate that gate itself, the gift, the uh, city, the shadow, both the repressive and the reactive. If you're looking at some of the other traditional human design texts, they call it the exaltation or the detriment. You want to thoroughly understand all of those different facets of that energy and get honest with yourself about where you are in that continuum. What is your default behavior? If it can also be really helpful to you know dive deep into the zodiac sign that governs that gate's energy. Um, we know the sun's opening it for you, but where is the sun in your zodiac, um, or sorry, in your astrological chart? Like what house does it sit in? Because that can show you where this incarnation cross is most likely playing out for you. What line is it on? Um, the line correlates to a specific exaltation or detriment sometimes in human design. So that's always worth kind of taking a look at to see like what are the, you know, exalted behaviors or the lessons or the challenges of having this gate placement. And again, all those things come together and interact with our own conditioning. What have we been taught about this specific trait? What have we been conditioned or messaged or influenced to believe about ourselves when it comes to the specific, you know, aspect of our energy? And it's all of those things like alchemizing together that are going to show you how and where your incarnation cross is showing up for you. And so I always encourage people to work on their big four first, um, especially your incarnation cross, your conscious sun. And then after that, move into your conscious earth, look at your unconscious sun, your unconscious earth, those four are really going to help shape your understanding for the entirety of your human design chart. And if you're a juxtaposition cross, really, really understanding this incarnation cross, this specific gate is going to unlock the rest of your chart for you. So that is it for today. If you have any other questions, definitely send them my way. This is my favorite thing to do each week is to answer your questions and build these videos. So you can email me at interiorcreature at gmail.com. You can DM me on Instagram. We're at interiorcreature. And yeah, I am so looking forward to hearing from you and I will see you next week.